Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger and welcome to Dare to Dream. I'm back recently from Florida where I was on stage at the New Media Summit. Speaking about new media, um, always a blast to be asked back there. It was my fourth time and fifth will be coming up in September. So uh, I'm a media visibility strategist. I help people out in the world create a unique and fierce presence through certified coaching to help them to write their book and make it into a page turner to take that book to a guaranteed international bestseller and to learn how to be booked on interviews, media interviews and get really big results from it because hey, we all want more exposure and visibility for who we are, what our message is and what we're offering out in the world. If I can help you a little further, go to debbie-inger.com. You see the spelling D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. And there is a report as my gift to you there for publicity, learn how to become the go-to expert in your field and be interviewed today on media. It's a complete 411 and will really help you get there. So we've got a great guest here today, Julie Lowenstein. She is a psychic medium healer channeler and we'll be exploring a little more her gifts and also have somebody come on who she's never met before and get a little reading from her so you can also experience her gifts in real time. And I'll tell you a little bit about Miss Julie. And hey, if you like this show, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. It is the place and space for you to donate to the show, whether it's a dollar or a cup of coffee or the price of a cup of coffee, whatever that is, feel free because you'll help this show flourish and have the highest quality of production, helping me out to get a team to help create a really amazing show for you because that's after all the most important thing that I have a great show I love showing up for and it's a great show that you enjoy showing up for as well. So to that end, just making a little note about time here because time is everything and being a creative human, <laughs> time, linear math, science, not my strong points always. So if I'm mindful about it, things will go much better. Uh, yeah, so who is Julie? Who is Julie Lowenstein besides my friend, she's, as I said, a medium, psychic, medical intuitive since childhood. And she helps people to receive a reading in person, in group, in uh, various settings, through photographs and artifacts, and to connect with family members and people who have passed away and crossed over. She can help with unresolved issues or major crises. And she performs energy healing as a medical intuitive children with sensory processing issues like autism or Asperger's are very near and dear to her heart. And her gifts include also animals, large and small. She assists the animals through her medical intuition and speaking with them, and then to get to the proper veterinarian care. And she's got a, a medical background herself. She is credentialed and was in the healing arts, has been, and still is for 20 years. She's also a Reiki master and teacher. And you can connect with Julie at mindsimedium.com, mindsimedium.com. And you can book a private appointment, a group or an event reading, as well as an individual healing session. Julie, welcome to Dare to Dream. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm happy to be with you. You know, I just want to go back through a little bit of what I just read because I find so many pieces of all of what you offer pretty fascinating. Okay. So I'm curious about the part of you helping people through photographs and artifacts. What does that mean exactly? Like what happens, what, do, what should they bring and what happens when you receive that? Uh, if they would bring a ring of someone who's crossed over, for example, a piece of jewelry, or if they bring a photograph, it's really one and the same for me. I get the energy. I believe that everything has energy and we all have energy. And so actually start feeling the energy of the person's personality, the person that's <coughs> over or a person that is still alive. It, it works either way. Hmm. And so it helps me get immediately in that person's energy versus, I mean, I can do it without the artifacts and the photographs as well, but it really kind of gets me right in there very quickly. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Cause I wasn't sure. Is it like I take my ring off, but it sounds like when you want the reading, somebody else bring a piece of something that belonged to them or a photograph of them and 
that's where you go from. I'm a big reader of eyes. So when I look at people's eyes and pictures, it just, boom, it puts me right into their personality characteristics. Wow. And yeah, so it's quite interesting, actually. What is that like? I, I can't even, I know they say the eyes are the window of the soul, but what is that like? <laughs> they, they are, actually. They really, yeah. really are. I can tell so much about a person with, you know, in their eyes. And it was like that as when I was uh, younger as well. I always felt like I could read people very well when I was little. Um, and it still stands today. And it just, again, it just is something that naturally occurs that puts me in that person's energy and helps me to read their character, personality characteristics. So what would happen if, so what if, for instance, you showed up for this interview uh -huh. and it could be me or anybody and we're doing this interview and there you are looking in my eyes going, mm, <laughs> not such a great person or you see something pretty significant that's aberrant. Like what would that be like? it's pretty profound. It's pretty profound because obviously something, you know, you cannot really let on, uh, you know, because you just, there might be what a four or 5% chance that I'd be off or, or, or wrong or something like that. So there's that aspect of it. And the second aspect is, is, you know, it really doesn't matter. I really expect, you know, accept every soul as they are. Mm -hmm. And so unless I'm doing a reading, then I usually, and, you know, have been taught and trained to put it in uh, perspective. And you say you were taught, so you're multi-generational, is that right? Yes, so that's that. true. How far that's back does it go? Um, it, gee, it goes back to my grandmother on my mother's side and then my, then my, uh, her mother. So my great, great grandmother and then my grandmother. And my great great grandmother had it as well, and then my grandmother did. They were both mediums and both channelers, um, in one aspect or another, not maybe exactly the way that I'm doing it. And they could read people as well. Same thing with the eyes. My grandmother also read tea leaves, and so the tea leaves gave her the tools to be able to catapult somebody's energy and in, into their lives. So it's kind of you know it was interesting. I grew up watching her do that. Um, so she would read people that way. It's interesting that it skips generations, that your mother didn't receive the gift, I assume? Yes, she did. Actually, oh. she did, but she just chose not to use it, um, really. She doesn't have the medium part or the channeling part, so it's kind of like it almost skips generations. My sons have it to a certain degree, too, but they don't get the medium part and the channeling. It's more about reading people and can understand what their energy feels like, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Or they, um, you know, have dreams and then it happens, that kind of thing. And when you do group readings, is uh -huh. that, you pull people out of the groups and the events and individually speak to them in front of the group, or uh -huh. do you do something for the entire group's energy? Actually, I do it both ways. So I've done audience readings, you know, where I would go in front of uh, maybe 70 or 80 people and actually, you know, would pick up the energy in the audience and pick up somebody's certain circumstance if they lost someone in a car accident, that kind of thing. And then I would get details and it would come out more and more and then that person stands. So I do, that's kind of a traditional in a group setting reading. Um, and then I've done family group readings where, let's say, I, the biggest group I had was 11 people all in the same family. That was quite interesting because, you know, there's some touchy situations sometimes that come up and it can be a little sticky. Uh, but I always prepare them beforehand um, by saying, how much do you, how much would you like me to say? Would you want me to just have, you know, just free fall, just say whatever comes out, you know, or do you want me to hold back a bit? And they'll tell you, usually the family will guide you. And then I've had, you know, smaller families where there's three or four people. So uh, I do that and then I do individuals, um, you know, the, the group, like at a home reading or, or I've done parties where I've done 15, 20 minute type of things too as well. Mm. Yeah. And tell me about the children that are near and dear to your heart, the children oh, with wow. autism and Asperger's. What is that for you? 
Oh my gosh. Um, thanks for asking me. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is about, I have an extensive occupational therapy background with children with autism. And so I've had some pretty extensive um, experiences with experiences, excuse me, with kids that have been mute and they can't, they don't really talk and the sounds are, they're extremely sensitive to sounds. Mm -hmm. And so therefore when you're trying to use occupational therapy with them to bring them around by play therapy, that type of thing, and they can be quite combative at times if you have the wrong sound or if you say the wrong thing, it's Mm -hmm. very touchy. So what I would do, I start using, with the parent's permission, of course, I would use the occupational therapy, play therapy, to get them, you know, going and then using some sensory, you know, desensitization with them. Um, At the same time, I would take my hand and I would get the healing going in my hand, you you know, the energy, the healing energy. And I would kind of, you know, put the hand about maybe six or eight inches you know, behind their back and get that energy going, running up and down their spine. And it was, has an instantaneous calming effect on the child. Mm -hmm. And so therefore by calming them down using energy healing, I was able to get a lot further, a lot quicker with the occupational therapy part of it. So it was really quite interesting. And then some of the parents would want to be taught how to do that so they could do that themselves with it. And that was very effective. It was really great. So for somebody who doesn't speak uh, or has difficulty communicating in the way that we are known to communicate Mm -hmm. on this planet today, how is that for you? Can you actually hear what is going on with them and what it is they're expressing inside or expressing to you? Yes, very good question. Um, You know, that's a very good question because I usually don't talk about that part never asked that question, but it's very true. Yes, because I can sense what they are saying inside and what they're feeling inside. So I feel like I was able to. Okay, okay, she's back. I'm back. This was hilarious. I deserve an Oscar (laughs) for keeping this This for over. It's Mercury. That's what I was telling him over five minutes. But listen, I'm going to put you in an interesting position and force you to jump right in here. Okay. Recapping because our guest is here and she has a limited, very limited amount of time now. Okay. So I want people to have an experience of you. You and Beth have never met each other. Beth actually missed the whole first beginning of this. So she's really placing her trust. And um, Beth, come on back to the show and welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so great. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Are you? Nice Yay. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm glad we get to see you. It, you're very lovely to see. Oh, thank you. So are you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank it's you. a miracle at this point. So Thanks, miracle. Debbie. Yeah. So Beth. Yes. Psychic medium, channeler, medical intuitive, highly, highly gifted, does past lives everything. I'm going to allow you to ask a question. You're brilliant. So I know you know enough not to ask something leading or give too much information. Sure. And then Julie will open up and start speaking to you. Okay, I have a question. So I've been dealing with a pretty serious health, chronic health issue for about 12 years, and it definitely feels like it's on the tail end now. But I'm just wondering if there's anything I need to clear emotionally or I should be super mindful of to keep this healing unfolding. Because I'm feeling like myself again. Yeah. Yes. It's a chronic condition. I'm picking up that it's a very chronic condition. Um, I immediately got like your upper GI. I don't yes. know if the chronic. Okay. Yes. Um, the upper GI is very much in distress. Um, it's almost like in in your stomach and the bottom part of your stomach. It's like a very. It's almost like an asset stabilization issue. At the same time, there's something else there. I'm not quite sure um, because it's grainy. Then I come down from the stomach and into the small intestine. And in the beginning of the small intestine, there's like maybe we call them in medicine skip lesions or or thinning of the intestinal wall in the beginning of the small intestine. Does that make sense? It, It does make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I feel like it definitely in the in the emotional end of it or um, 
I always say the alignment of the body and mind and soul are so important and we can get thrown off with that so much when we have a chronic condition. I've known that with my own personal experience and I feel like there was something 15 years ago um, or at age 15, there's a 15 in it where you had a, a circumstance in your life that kind of really rocked the boat a bit and I feel like that's when the condition may have started, whether you had symptoms then or not. And it, it, it resonated in your body like a shockwave and it yeah. started this condition off. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, every healer and intuitive I've spoken to basically gets it within 10 to 15 years, but I can go 15 years back and there was a shocking thing. And then 10 years back, there was a shocking thing. And I think the one 10 years back compounded the one from before <laughs> yes. it. But yeah. So because what I saw uh, when I was saying that are building blocks. So I got building blocks and it's kind of like the, it could, actually there's something that when you were six years old or there's a six and it's 16 or six. And so that was kind of like, okay, they're showing me a building block stack. So in childhood, you want to pull that one out and then the other blocks, they, they barely stayed stacked, but they were wobbling a bit. So then they got, you know, control. And then the thing 10 years ago, boom, it, it really rocked the boat and the blocks fell. And then I'm getting one, it was 10, 10 years, that 10 year mark. And then it's something five years ago, but I feel like it was then centered around what you're, you're dealing with. And so those all put together have just really, um, you know, you've been through a lot. You've handled it quite well. My gosh, you've done a lot of work around uh, spiritually around trying to really get your mind good and solid within with this and you should tap your pat yourself on the back give yourself a lot of credit because Thank I feel you. like you're not giving yourself <laughs> as much credit you know I mean does that make sense to so that very it, hard uh, I, yes yes I've heard that my whole life and I kind of under, I understand what it means now yes <laughs> Yes, yes. And so I feel like that you're so much on the right track. Your body, mind, and soul is in alignment. I feel like, you know, like all of us, you got pretty um, rocked about and out of alignment many times, but you've always been successful in putting yourself back in alignment. So um, the answer to your question is, are you doing everything? Is that, is that correct? You're doing everything that you possibly can to Remedy this? Yes. Yeah. A resounding loud yes. Yes, 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 yes. You've used some pretty unconventional. Con oh, yes. Me. Yeah, you have. You really have. One in particular that you're using, it, the, the one that's very most unconventional, is the one that you're not thinking as much that it's helping as much as it really, really is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't intellectually, get well, intellectually, I know it's the thing that's helping the most. I get that mentally. But because yes. it's so effortless and easy and painless and no side effects and so fast, it's like, really? I mean, Debbie and I have talked about this before, like, really? Like this, I, I know, I get that it's working, but it's actually working. <laughs> and it just like doesn't require any effort on my part. Except and you know what? I'm getting really clearly that that is the most effective. So I think you're feeling it. Obviously, you resonate with that and you're feeling it. So stick the course with it. It's I will. wonderful. Thank you. I just like it that you've tried six different approaches and that that one, you're still using about four of those and that that one, you know, you're not thinking it's doing as much, but you're right on the money with it. Stick with it. Thank you. You're I, so have, I want to, Beth, do you still have a few minutes? I have. Well, my call is in one minute, so I have one minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know that we could go that deep then, but I was going to ask for a bit of a past life reading for Beth, something that might okay. help her with her situation right now to better understand it or heal it. Okay. Oh, a lot of, I'm getting a lot actually. <laughs> okay. Um, so in a past life situation, you actually had the same issue, or, or maybe not the exact same, but the same area of the body, the same exact area of the body. And it couldn't be, um, okay, so it couldn't be handled and dealt with in that life. And it, it really, really took you down. 
And, and in this be, life, yeah. it's popping back up and you're actually getting it resolving and get it, getting it worked through. You've picked up so many tools and have learned so much by having what you do with this condition that you've learned so much. I feel like that what you learn, you're going to pass it on to people and actually help so many more people with what you have. That's a plan. It's incredible. It, and you know, I'm getting chills. Me and too. when I get really big, cold, are you too? Yeah, my arms are totally goose bumpy. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Because I just, I'm so excited oh. about it. I mean, you know, it's terrible that you've gone through this, but at the same time, you're going to make a profound difference and change with other people. Uh, it's and all so, for all of you. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm thank so you both so much. I'm sorry I have to jet. This is awesome. Yeah, Amazing, right. Debbie. I'm so grateful. Julie, you're beautiful soul. Oh, Debbie always you. leads me to the very best people. Oh, and She does and me too. I have a big audience, so you get, let me know how I can share you with my audience too. And thank you so much. This is oh, awesome. Thank you so much. She'll be out in LA. We'll, we'll be with her in person. I'm going to have her over and do a little meet and greet with my intimate right. group. So thank you for right. coming on. Right. Thank, thank you. you Bye now. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. And so you can see in just a few minutes what's possible. But if Julie had had an hour with her, what else would be possible? So Julie, I have a funny question mm -hmm. about. So I'm saying if Julie had had an hour with Beth, Obviously, I even had a lot of questions <laughs> for Beth. I would have loved to know the other side. I would have loved to know, you know, yeah. any other energetics about the body. I mean, I had a lot of questions. Okay. That said, when I say, Julie, comma, one hour reading, <laughs> do you ever keep your readings to an hour or do you always go over? You know the answer to that, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so people get up like, you I can't for their buck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I believe in giving people what they need, what they really need. And so if at an hour, it's there's nothing more frustrating when you're with a, a you know, someone and whether it's a count, traditional counselor or non-traditional like I am, you know, and your time's up, boom, and you stop. Well, if there's more information to give, and I can do it within about 10 more minutes or 15, I take that. And I try to, you know, give myself 10 minutes before the hour. And if there's a little more information there, I am very generous with my time because I want to help people heal. And so I give them what they need. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. And you, and when you say that, what I can feel here is that you know a business person might look at you and say that's crazy she charges this much the hour <laughs> yeah. should be on with her day but when i hear you say that i feel the energy of that alignment you speak of the body mind spirit of body mind soul that you are really in alignment with your gifts and with helping other people by doing that so that's lovely i you know i'm sure you leave people. Yeah. yeah it's it's a big deal what do you think is the Thank you. Greatest misperception about psychics today. Oh, well, I'm trying to change that perce perception. I don't like the part of uh, psychic, the psychic world. There's different realms of the psychic world. Um, and I don't want to get into that really. But what I will say, though, I'm glad you asked the question. I'm trying to change that perception because there's a lot of people like me a lot of great people and um, that are trying to really help people heal with their gifts. And so I feel like the greatest misperception is people don't understand sometimes that when you channel, um, they think it's more witchcraft or that type of thing. And yes, there is some of that, but I'm not about that. And I don't, you know, to each his own, you know? But what I'm trying to do is really talk about the healers like myself that use their gifts to help people heal. And that can be in a multitude of ways. As we just saw, uh, it can be from a physical condition, but there's always a connection with the physical uh, symptoms in the body. Being a nurse, I've, I saw that all the time. Being an OT, I saw it all the time. There's always, always a connection with the emotional part of a person as, as big as life as their physical condition. So I believe that you really have to change the physical and, and the emotional in order to get completely well. 
Mm. That helps. And so the biggest misperception is in, in my realm and my of people that are trying to heal with these intuitive gifts is that it's a different thing than when you're into maybe, you know, a, di a different type of psychic realm with a crystal ball. And that's fine. Like I said, I don't, you know, what, to each his own, but I'm not like that. I use my gifts to heal. And that, that helps, I guess. I imagine I've heard this said out there by skeptics about psychics where they'll ask a question or let's say the psychic asks a question and the person's retort is, well, you're a psychic. How come you don't know that? As though you have a handbook to the entire planet, world, matrix people. And it seems um, sort of a very cruel thing to say because we're all very gifted, but I mean, I'm clairsentient. If somebody said that, which means I receive information through my senses. If somebody said that to me, yeah. it would piss me off, but it's not how my gift works. Um, so I mean, you have way more access. So how how do you how does that land for you? The same way it lands for you too. <laughs> uh, but I just I, I I get that not very often because I really the people that need me the very most that they come to me, um, and so. You know, I seem to always get great clients, just very great clients. They need me and I need them uh, to do what I do. And it's always a pretty, really great fit. But sometimes I do have that happen. And when I can tell that they are there just for that reason, you know, to try to get me to say, well, I think because I only know about probably 90%, 85 to 90%, and the other parts free will. And the other part is God. And so, or your higher power. Uh, I honor all religions. So it's your higher power and it's also your free will. So A, you can't know everything because, and anyone that claims they do, it's not a good thing. Um, and so I just do the very best I, I can do with my gifts and people that are there for the right reasons, they always seem to be very, very happy. Mm. I'm curious, one of the things, of course, yes, and I also resonate deeply with that you bring in the best clients. There is a, a lot of power in that. And people who have come yes. to me to work with me have said, how do you know I'm the right person? Which is a funny thing to ask. But yes. They're dying for me to vet them. But I really, if I can be very, I don't know, cliche about this, which I'm so not, but no, really, no. like God and the universe do the picking. Mm -hmm. I just know it's really easy. People who are attracted to my work, they're my people. And I can tell in a conversation, you were saying earlier, you can look in someone's eyes and boom, you're there, you read their energy, you know what's going on. Um, you know, for me, obviously, a conversation, feeling someone's energy and vibe, it's very clear. So I also feel the same, I bring in the best people and clients and I feel very solid in that so of course that's what's created I agree makes it easy and um, something I'm curious about in the list of things you provide is house clearings oh, <laughs> oh my god could you share a story about that about a house clearing you did and what it was like and the result Oh, yes. I have a very interesting house clearing story. It was here in Cincinnati, and um, it was in a particular area down by the river that um, was a very prominent place back in maybe the turn of the century. And so the house is maybe over 100 years old. Well, it was about 140 or 50 years old, actually. And it was used for um, to hide slaves in the basement. And so it was very profound. Um, it was a photographer I'd hired actually. And she said, let me know how that you feel when you bring, would you mind going in my uh, home? Because they were fixing it up and ready to move in in three months. And she said, there's no way my husband and I can move in this house feeling like we feel in this house. And she had no prior experience with psychic clearing, and she didn't even really believe in the afterlife at all. So that was quite interesting. To make a long story short, because I could talk about it for half an hour, um, I felt the energy immediately in the house. 
And can you imagine, it was 150 year history in that house. So you had a lot going on. But the most profound was the slaves in the basement and it was a dirt basement and it was very dark and a little bit, you know, on the leery side. And I went with another person, a shaman that I really uh, highly recommend and respect. And we went in the basement and um, we performed a, a ceremony. It's like, um, he did something with the pot and Epsom salts and lit a fire in a pot and it drew, he believed that it drew the energy and I believe it too. It, I've seen it many times and I've been with him. It drew the energy, the, the negative energy in, you know, pulled it into the pot and into the room. And then as he did that, he also made a crystal grid and so did I. We put our crystal grids down, it drew the energy into it and he believed, and so did I, that it lifted those energies and released those spirits from that basement that had been trapped in there all those years. So when, you know, he explained that, what I'm explaining to you, to the client, and like I said, they didn't even believe in this until this point. So when he did that, and then we performed a ceremony, a very, uh, you know, to the higher power, um, a prayer, really, and so we said the prayer and we stood around the room and held hands. And then we asked God to release these spirits that needed to be released because they were afraid to cross over basically what was going on. They were afraid to cross over. They had such a harrowing experience on earth that they were afraid to cross over. So when we did the pot ceremony and the crystal grid, I could actually, I could see, feel, and hear them leave. And there was way, way over, I would say about a hundred that left. And it was very much, it was very profound. And it was, it was, but at the same time, it made us cry. And at the same time, it made us feel so good because so many had left and they crossed over to a, re a really good place. And that was the most profound. Yeah. And this woman and her husband, once you yeah. performed this ceremony and cleared this energy from the home what was that like for them then to move in oh well they felt really good about it they they could actually feel they couldn't see or hear but they could actually feel the energy in the room shift it was that profound that you could you know they had no experience with it but they could actually feel that energy shift quite profoundly and so after that they felt a lot better and i guess they moved in i want to say three or four months after that and they could actually live in there very comfortably mm. so that was a very rewarding experience wow you are so brave to do things like that are you ever <laughs> look i've seen a lot of scary movies so when you say that yeah. i wonder like are you ever going into a spooky house are you ever afraid something's going to come in you or come after yes. you? Yes, I have been before. And when I had, I speak of a, a mentor I had in my 30s, and he was very, 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 very thorough on how to prepare yourself, how to protect yourself. And I had, I had not had that training, I wouldn't do this at all. But he taught, he was very, very heavy on the white light and, and the higher power, and that if you do these protection prayers, and you really, really have a strong spiritual base that one, no matter what you're exposed to, that it cannot attach to you. And I really profoundly believe that and I've experienced it. So I don't put myself in those situations very often, maybe once or twice a year, that, you know, to that, that big and profound. Because it does, after you leave, it does take energy out of you, a lot of energy. And you have to do a lot of work putting the energy back in and get and keeping yourself very aligned. But the answer to your question is yes. Had I not learned how to protect myself, I wouldn't go near it at all. Um, but so now I'm not. I'm not afraid now. No, I can. I can actually say no. I'm not. Wow. Yeah. Man, you, that's beyond for me. That is really. <laughs> and uh, so, let's see. There's. I have so many things percolating to ask you. I want to remind people. Who are watching or listening you can find julie lowenstein at minds medium.com and this is dare to dream debbie dashinger um julie what is uh what is a ritual or practice that you use every day that keeps you grounded 
Well, oh, well, it, it quite, I'm very conscientious and it quite takes a lot of energy in a good way. I, I do Reiki healing on myself every day mm -hmm. um, to balance my chakras and keep my energy good and open and clear. So actually what I'm doing is clearing my chakras. And so if there's any, if they're, if I'm low on energy, it fills me up. But before I do that, I have to clear them all, clear each chakra out. Then I fill each, each chakra back up and make sure that they're all open and full. And after that, then I will, if there are any areas in my body that I feel or my mind that's a little bit out of alignment, I have to work on that. I, I intuitively feel that. So I do a healing on myself every day and I use some form of guided imagery. I'm not really big on meditating per se. I, I lay there very still for 20 minutes a day. Mm. And I guess you could call that meditation. Um, but I am big on using a lot of guided imagery. So uh, to help keep my third eye open and keep it open properly, meaning, you know, of the white light, only the white light through God and a lot of prayers. And um, so I do guided imagery, make sure my chakras are healed and balanced. And I also do, I, I guess what you could call meditation, where I lay there and I try to get, you know, images or I actually hear from my guides messages on what is the most profound way I can keep healing and what people need. So I get a lot of really important messages that way sometimes. Mm. A lot of uh, energy to keep you aligned, but also um, really open uh, to good, to be to good, to do good. Yeah. You know, True. one thing that you and I have never yes. done, and I know this is not so for many, many, many of your clients, but we've actually never done anything about someone who has uh, passed or crossed over for me. I don't know if there's anyone there, mm -hmm. but um, I'm wondering if, you get anything. I'd love people to have an experience of you doing that. I've actually never had an experience of you doing that. So, uh, yeah. Do you get anything? Yeah, we have it. Okay. I'm getting your, one of your grand, I'm, I'm getting, she's very, 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 very direct. I am her maternal grandmother. <laughs> Was she extremely direct and knew her mind? Or was it, the, it do I have the energy of the other, of the paternal? Um, well. She's feeling like a grandmother, so. But she's, she's made it pretty clear. Um, yeah. Did, did you know your maternal grandmother? Oh, yes, I did. I knew she was coming she, through. Whoa, she has such clear, she said she knows her boundaries, she knew who she was, and she was all about using her strength and her energy to do well, to do, to do good. And she, mm -hmm. she said people either loved me or they didn't. Mm -hmm. Because she, was, she really had very strong feelings and ideas mm -hmm. and would stick to those. And um, she was very, very principled woman. She wants you to say, she likes to say it that way. She said it very like that. <laughs> does that resonate? Yeah, it does. Yeah, this is yeah, maternal for sure. It, so I don't know, but it's like, she also had so much love though in her heart at the same time. Yeah. Very kind and very giving um, and had a lot of love. She didn't feel on earth that she showed it though as much as she liked. Um, so it may not seem that way to you, but that's how she feels. And she wish she could have given more to you and more to your brother. Is that right? And yes. Yeah. But I feel like she almost feels like she, gave you a little more attention because you were the you were a girl and she felt that your girl needed her grandmother and she felt that she gave you a little bit more attention in certain ways because you needed her does that make sense oh thousand percent yeah and so she did give gifts to your brother 
she did give gifts to your brother, but they weren't quite as maybe profound as, as with you. Mm -hmm. And she'd like to, she'd like to feel she's tentative about it, but she, but at the same time, she, so she's being respectful and asking you if she felt that, um, she's gave you an element of strength from this family lineage oh that you God. drew some strength from her. So and it totally makes me want to cry because it's not even just strength. I mean, honestly, she, I'm gave, getting chills. <laughs> she gave me life. I don't know that I would be here without she or my grandfather. And I know she loved me profoundly. I know she had idiosyncrasies and yada, yada, but I felt incredibly seen and loved by her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she was very respectful and asking that question and she's so happy that you feel that way because that was her prime purpose in life and goal is mm -hmm. to make sure that you had a really strong anchored she's she's definitely placing emphasis on anchored a strong anchoring to her family lineage she liked her family's lineage she was very proud of it mm -hmm. um and times when she said sometimes people were not so proud of their lineages in the same respect if that makes sense She's mm -hmm. not coming out and saying exactly what that is because she said, you know what that is. And she was very proud of her lineage and very proud of her principles. And she learned it from her mother and her grandmother in, in a certain way. She feels like it was, has been passed down on her side. And so she said, honey, it was my pleasure to give you the anchoring and the love that you didn't get from, uh, you know, that you need it, that she felt that she needed to help fill that void and to give you that love to anchor you. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I, I can have I very big chills. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask her about, I was hoping she would come sure. through, to be honest. Um, and there's a reason. Um, I want her, because this is always important to her, so I want her to weigh in um on the uh romantic relationship i'm in right now and i would like to get okay. her feedback there's a few idiosyncrasies there and i think that's all i'll say she's smiling but she said tread lightly because there's things that, that he needs to work out and things you need to work out and that it's about timing number one and the second thing is she said you would know why she's saying so because we don't want to get very personal she was saying that it's very important for you to tread lightly and that you would understand what that means do you understand what that means tread lightly no i really don't is she saying go slow is she saying yes. back off <laughs> no not back off at all she's very happy with his character mm. and his judgment and mm. But he, she said it's more, it's a feeling of take it back up and take it slow because there's things that he needs to work out on his own to be the best he can be for you nice. because he wants to, he really genuinely wants to give you the best he can give you. And the only way that he feels himself, yes, yeah, actually feeling this way himself. The only way he can give you that very best that you so need, want, and deserve is to get himself very right and very good and very solid. And he's feeling a little bit out of sorts right now. And so it's more like tread lightly. In other words, giving his room. And I feel like that she feels like, and so do I, that you're you're all about that it's not a problem but you can tend to you you love him very much and he loves you so it can get a little bit if you get too close and too deep too quick it can be a little bit um put him off of his game plan so to speak okay. and a little bit off of yours too i feel like you're going right. through a lot of changes as well so, so okay. it's almost like you guys need to you know work on your perspective goals yeah. per se 
And then at the same time, I feel like you're doing a good job by coming together and making it work. She said, uh, like I've always taught you, the key is communication. The key is communication, no matter how difficult it may become at times. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, that's actually incredibly apropos. And I have intuitively felt it, uh, never said it out loud, but wondered to myself about just the ebb and the flow of our time together. And um, for sure, a lot blossoming in my space. Um, a lot of new things looming that are awesome, yeah. but things calling my attention. And now for sure, his, mm -hmm. he's just had some big change. So yes, that's, that's very true. And I wondered when I met him, because there was a, um, well, he shares the same birthday as her. And for some oh. reason, I just <laughs> also, he just left a profession, like literally just left a profession that she was in. And somehow for me, when I met him and after we've been dating a while, and we, I think we realized, well, I realized later, something's here. When I asked him that quote, you know, when's your birthday? And he said that, and I knew what he did for a living. I just felt like that was so interesting. And I was wondering- It was a sign. I'm sorry, Debbie, go ahead. Yeah, that was it, really open-ended question. Yeah, because she, well, she piped in and that's what made me talk really quick because I never stop channeling when I'm in a reading. So I, I apologize, but it, it, I think that you know that it hits me like that and I say it and I can't really control it much. Um, and she said it very loud and profound. That was the sign. Okay. She very much likes his character, his character, his, he's got a really good character and a good soul, a good heart, soul, and character. And she, she gave the wink. <laughs> she said, she used to give winks. She used to wink, like when she approved of something. Um, I don't know if you remember it. She's hoping that you do, but she used to give the, give a wink, you know, when she approved of something. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Talking about a pearl, did you, she had some kind of pearl brooch or it was like a necklace that it's, it, it was a pearl and then she showed me a cameo as well. So there's like a cameo and then there's a pearl. There's like two separate pieces of jewelry. Yes. She feels that your mother has one set of that she has your mother would know what that looks like if you if you're not quite sure about it yeah there well okay does that make sense at all yeah i have some of her jewelry for sure and i definitely have the pearl things you're talking about i have a few brooches of her okay hers, including one with pearls and then uh i believe i have i have some outstanding pieces of hers but yes for sure my mom may also yeah she had great taste oh my god oh god yes so oh well and she she tried to um and obviously she said she, this is her words not mine obviously i've succeeded mm -hmm. um to groom you into a beautiful beautiful soul and human being and it kind of gets me choked up because she's very very serious about that and she's very proud of you very proud of you she's showing me something that you did in the kitchen that was a ritualistic kind of a thing that you did almost every day or she did almost every day and then she tried to get you to do it was it was based about around Something that she did in the kitchen was, was with cooking and preparing something. It was more centered around work. Does that make sense? Yes. My grandmother was an awesome cook. She worked full time. Doing the egg beaters, like the old egg beaters, you know, oh. with the thing. She's doing this with the egg beaters. Does that make sense? She, yes. So I spent okay. so much time there. And she would, um, eggs over easy. I think it was like sunny side up over easy, something like that. But she made me exquisite eggs on toast. I just remember it was like the best thing in the world. Eggs were very big. I don't remember eating anything else. I was probably a very picky eater. 
but also in general, her in the kitchen baking and cooking. And I was often there while she did it. And God, she was good. She said, thank you so much because she, she just delighted in cooking for you, delighted in it. And that was a joy of hers, actually. It was giving you her food, you know, cooking her food and serving it to you and letting you see it and watch it and show you. Yeah, yes, yes. But she was very specific about the egg beater, the eggs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did you want to ask her another question while I have her here? You know what I'd really love to get her feedback on if she can check in with my mother right now? And I'd love her to help me give me some insight maybe something that's going no. on that would help right and immediately she said wow and she went like this she she has a lot of empathy what you're going through with your mother mother's going through profound mental changes yeah. profound physical changes is her memory i mean everybody when we get older our memory is not all all of us get lose a lot a component of that but i feel like there's some medication that she's on is she on three to four medications because there's one medication that they're thinking is giving her like you know they, they're thinking it's a memory issue but it's actually the medication medication interacting with another medication that is causing her um, to be mentally a little bit foggy forgetful and sometimes highly agitated it's not the right medication that's mixed with another one does that make sense I would have to ask her um, I don't know about that my mom yes. is so anti uh, big pharma she'd be loath to jump on medication so I'd have to ask her if she is on I'll it. tell you what. It, it, it could be a supplement or it could be something as simple as that as well. I'm not seeing that it could be pharmacology. Honestly, I see two prescriptions. I do see two prescriptions with the actual labels on them. And then I see, does she take three supplements, three or four supplementation products? Totally. There's, in, there's interaction there that is causing her, like the supplements with the medication, there's some kind of interaction happening, happening that's making her eat, feel agitated at times and feel foggy at other times. Yeah. But she does have some issues going on, like in her arteries, she has, if she hasn't had high cholesterol, I feel like it is something of that nature that's hardening the arteries a little bit more and not making them as pliable, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, a lot of joint pain, just a lot of joint pain, but, the, yeah. but there's nothing profound that I want to just go, oh my God. It's kind of like a mishmash of, mash, mash of a lot of little things that are adding up that are just feeling miserable. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of, and your grandmother, your grandmother said, and she can drive you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, I love it. A hundred percent. She yeah. said, darling, you skate on thin, thin ice. <laughs> <laughs> She did, she said, darling, you're skating on thin, thin ice. And it can be quite nerve wracking because you never know what version you can, you're gonna get. The agitation, you can get agitation or sometimes you can get kind of not, um, you're, the feeling that she's very present or that she's not paying quite a, enough attention to what you're saying. It's more about what she's trying to say to you all the time instead of what you're saying. You don't feel listened to and she said, even though you don't feel listened to, she goes, that's nothing new. <laughs> oh, my God. And she had a lot of empathy with your relationship. Yes, she did. Yes, she really did. She's having a lot of empathy. Yes, she's having a lot of empathy. She said that's nothing new, though. It's not. No. She's having a lot of empathy because you're going through quite a profound experience. 
she's proud of you though for overlooking the things that you do and that you're very strong and you're able to tell her what you need to tell her mm-hmm. and the tone you're telling her and without holding all that in, you're able to say it in a way that it, it is direct but it's not mean and insulting it's direct so you need but what you obviously do need to do she's saying at the same time though skating on she said that's what i meant by the thin ice is that uh you're almost feeling like your skates especially you don't know if you're gonna fall through at any minute and that's mm-hmm. how your nerves feel <laughs> yes yeah. wow yeah. this is deep that that's my, i'm telling you right now that is my you grandmother know I, I, you know I, Was say that again? I said, you know, I always go deep. Yeah, that's like. She has a lot to share. So when I do a personal reading for you, I feel she will definitely pretty quick and we can click right into her. She's very present. And she said she has a lot to say to you Mm -hmm. a lot. I would love to receive yeah. that. Okay, then we shall set something up because my God, this is like yeah. talking to a real person about a real person. Oh. That was so detailed. Oh. You couldn't have been saying, I don't know, you could have said a million other things and it wouldn't have been accurate about my mom's health, mentally, physically, my relationship with her, how <laughs> very difficult she is. And by the way, the fact that you even use the word miserable is how I have the exact quality I've described. When I speak on stage and I have to talk about my child, and I do, I bring it in. Mm-hmm. I always felt that she was very committed to being miserable and struggling. So, yeah. so to hear that verbatim back is amazing. And also, by the way, that is my core wound, is being mm-hmm. heard and seen because of yes. growing up. So that's had a profound effect on me too. And why I do what I do out in the world. Yes, I was going to say, I was just going to, she actually said that, is that that's why she's so proud of you for using your voice in this point in your life and in this time in your life. And you always use your voice, but it's, con- I mean, you keep working and working to deliver your voice to help people, to help people change and make the changes they need and they want so desperately. And it's so important that that's why you've used your voice and and you've done such, she's so proud of you for using your voice to make it really make a change in other people's lives. And at the same time, it's helped you feel really good about yourself. And she said, you deserve nothing better than that. And that's what she wished for you is actually, she encouraged you to use your voice. She said she was big on using voice and use it and see what you feel from your heart she pulled no punches wow man <laughs> she i feel pulled so no punches. good i love you grandma good. i love you grandma so much that was really she beautiful you too. i got the chills again <laughs> Ooh. yeah so julie let me ask you this is dare to dream what are you okay. next dare to dream what are your future dreams and goals Oh, thank you for that. My future dreams and goals are to do more shows and podcasting or radio to get my message out that people can, no matter how painful or no matter how depressed, painful, what they're ever going through, it can, they can take their life in their own hands and get control of their own lives. And, and feel good about themselves, no matter how bad life circumstances may be, physically, mentally, or all three, spiritually. And so my, my goal is to deliver that message and help people achieve it, to really get tools to achieve the best part of themselves, body, mind, and soul, that they can possibly be and feel really good in this life about themselves. That's my goal. And whether I can do it through books or I can do it through speaking, public speaking, I feel like it's time that I want to use my voice as well to help people. So I hope that answered it. 
it's a beautiful dream for sure. And may we Thank all you. enjoy this voice of yours and these amazing gifts. So tell me, let's see, what do I want to ask you? What would you like to let the viewers or the listeners know here at the very end? Well, if, if you're, if you, if, if people are feeling at alignment, a lot of people don't know what that means, but alignment is when you're feeling your, your circumstances, even materially. If you're in a home, you don't really are that great. You don't feel comfortable in. If you're in a job, you don't feel comfortable in. If you're having a lot of issues in maybe your family or whatever, and you may only have one of those, but it, it's enough and profound enough to throw the other areas of your life off in, in that way. So the message is, is if your outer circumstances aren't measuring and meshing up with your heart and your inner circumstances, then there's something severely out of alignment and it can be helped and you can take control of it and you can live your best life. You can, you, you can come through the rain and there's sun again mm -hmm. and it can be a beautiful life still. There's, not, there's always hope, hope, hope. There is always hope. Julie, thank you for sharing your brilliance on Dare to Dream. It's been great. Thank you, Deb. Thanks for having me. Mm. Mm. May it be the first of many. I end today's show oh, with this quote you. from Marianne Rodmacher. Live with intention. Walk to the edge. Listen hard. Practice wellness. Play with abandon. Laugh. Choose with no regret. Continue to learn. Appreciate your friends. Do what you love. Live as if this is all there is. Next week on the show, you're going to want to tune in. I am featuring Adam Lamb. He helps success-focused men and women become the healthiest versions. How? He's got a unique mix of private coaching and hormone optimization. So folks, He's drawn my blood and he's going to do a total reading with me in front of you about my body, my health, my aging or anti-aging, all of it. So I'm going to be in an open book so you can see the kind of cutting edge stuff he's involved in and the ways he's going to show me to reverse, heal, improve what's going on. Again, subscribe to the YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And thank you so much for joining me today on the show. Love you guys and talk to you next week. Love you, Julie.